I made a brownie, and it was just for me. <laughs> You're perfect. <laughs> we are Karam and Eleanor. <laughs> this is the second video in our Algonquin series, recounting our three-week canoe trip across Algonquin Park, Canada in the fall of 2019. This was our first portage trip, and as you will soon find out, neither one of us really knew what we were doing. Get the fuck out of this fucking place. <laughs> our route started and ended at Opiango, stretching up to Brent, then back down. This video will take us from Happy Isle to Burnt Root. This is very unplanned. <laughs> Is this where you peed yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> Bait. <laughs> I was literally like, I am not going a step further from the dead. <laughs> Man, what a beautiful campsite. It's my favorite so far. You're my favorite so far. I hope so. The simple things that you know you usually do on a day-to-day -day basis, but just because we're doing it out here, just makes it so much better. On our third morning out in the park, we traveled from Happy Isle to Big Trout Lake. Oh, it was a long day of moving. Made it to our first portage. Of the day, not our first. We are now seasoned portagists. Our first portage was very short. Really? Ready for this? 340 meters only. I have never been so ready in my life to do something with period cramps. All right, you got this. You're a champ. Whoop me. All right, so I'm leaving the uh, solar panels here to charge and uh, we are going up to do the first round. Doing portages and steps instead of carrying everything at once leaves us happier, but also much slower. The second one, however, really tested us. 1.8 kilometers of very steep, irregular terrain. Are you ready? She's ready. She's born ready. <laughs> we stopped because I needed a little break from my shoulders. I'm a leaf. <laughs> now we have to walk all the way back. I don't think here. There's nothing like a very long portage in hot weather with mosquitoes whirling around your face to put you in a really foul mood. I'm losing my goddamn mind and I just want to eat some mac and cheese. Do we have mac and cheese? No. Let's go home. I never want there to be mac and cheese more than five minutes away from my house. And back up we go. We were nearly delirious by the end of our hike. Ah, oh, no. So this is what happens when I let Karam drive. I drive usually. There we go, let's adjust the lighting there so you can really see the damage. Wow, okay, now you're adjusting the Hand for, for size here, but really it is not that hard to navigate us through here. It's not like it is the size of a canoe. You wanna try being in the back and navigating on your own? You can fit three truffles in here, quite honestly. Also, the back is from where you navigate. Not with land like this. Not with land like this. Please, enlighten us on the different types of land that are necessary for your skill. <laughs> the fan, the people want to know. Well, it's because... This is why he never gives me the camera. Because I actually get some truth out of this story. Ah, <laughs> uh, just take us home. When we finally made it out of the swamp area that followed our portage, just as I was about to snap at Karam for making me repeat something for his shot, his camera shut down and refused to turn back on. The next 20 minutes of rowing were spent in silence. A rare occasion for me. Reflecting the real purpose of this trip and the significance of recording it. Instinctively, recording this trip is, is a frustrating process for me as it means coming out of the moment to record it. Okay, so... I like the lull of silence and the rhythm of rowing because it allows me to completely and utterly get lost in my thoughts. The unconscious flow of thoughts and ideas is intoxicating. Having that interrupted is frustrating, but not everybody travels the same way. And to get the results, you need to put in the work. 
Complaining about something I would ultimately enjoy and benefit from is pointless as well as selfish. Officially set up our first camera and we're getting a canoe and we're gonna come back <laughs> because it's hard work, you know. It's only us production, production -ing. So this is what was going on in my head as I pondered the loss of the camera during that 20 minute paddle. Ironically, it then turned on by itself before I had to voice my apologies or thoughts to Karam. Until now. These troubles were quickly forgotten when we arrived to that night's campsite. The most beautiful spot of the whole trip. You can see the benches here. It's fun. Holy crap. Welcome home. Start a highway. A straight road to follow. Yeah, we're on bodies. Fucking oh, <laughs> What a day. Really? Thank God your camera's working. That would have really, like, changed the game. <laughs> Good morning! <laughs> so today is a rest day and um, we've just really taken our time this morning to kind of get out of bed and I have my solar panels out trying to reset everything make sure that everything is fully charged I'm also making some file transfers to make sure that uh, all my memory cards are empty and nice So the bower kind of gets a little bit gross um, when everything just keeps being piled into it which is why we've taken a rest day to sort of reorganize things. We have the main courses, we have some desserts, we have some um, things for breakfast, and then we have soups and starters. So honestly, this is fucking awesome because they're really tasty. After a full rummage through our food barrel, we decided scrambled eggs, onion and peas, and creamed corn was the way to go for our big brunch. The eggs were a little bland, the onions were the bomb, a solid 7.5 out of 10. With in a hammock. <laughs> I spent the rest of the afternoon in the hammock, napping and reading. Frank Herbert's June is slowly capturing all of my thoughts and making it hard to focus on anything else. Oh yeah, this shit's gonna burn like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Karam built a fire for us so I could start cooking our dinner. Gender norms, I know. What could like this fire time? I'm a We just made fire and now cooking some bread. How's that going? <laughs> um, mixed, mixed, uh, mixed bag of eggs. It will be okay, but for now I have severely burnt the underneath of the pot um, and the bread is not cooked. <laughs> Regardless, it tasted great once chucked into a bowl of soup. Oh, well, that is still so doughy. <laughs> Fuck. Is this for me? No. Oh. You want it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> but anyways, the day is getting a lot nicer. You're like, ah, uh, I need to go film this house and see what the sun's doing. She makes fun of me, but she will appreciate all this footage later. I know. I know she will. But look. I'm 
on today's menu we have some very uncooked banok bread and mushroom soup. Soup's really good. This is just like thousand miles to you. The next morning, I woke up to the biggest period leak of my life. Not quite the romantic morning I had imagined starting my 24th birthday with, but hey. It's such thick blood. Yeah, it's really thick blood. It always is. It's not like what people imagine. The rest of the day quickly made up for it. Today's Anna's birthday. <laughs> and this is my birthday gift. Our next destination is going to be Burnt Root Lake. We have three very short portages. And it's my birthday. <sighs> it's your birthday. What are we going to do for your birthday? Mm, I want a squirrel. Yeah, but we don't want to harm the wildlife. No, it won't be harmed. It would be loved so much. <laughs> <laughs> Too much, maybe. Then it dies. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, I'd love to be with you. In your arms beneath your First portage of the day. 300 we moved off of Big Trout Lake into smaller, narrow waters, where we were lucky enough to observe lots of geese up close. It was hot, like sunburn hot. So we took our time, meandering down the stream. I told Karam it never rains on my birthday, but he didn't believe me. Well, he does now. Bar. <laughs> and I can't have one. <laughs> I feel betrayed. <laughs> I would do. It's okay, it's your birthday after you do. I think it's a snake. It's, it's a crocodile. It's a hippo. <laughs> the portages were easy, but there was a lot of room. The most we'd done in one day so far. I got a little frustrated at Karam's filming again, but I think I was mainly just too hot and burnt. I know, but it's just really hard to turn around. I know, but balancing. we have to kind of make an effort. <laughs> just got to our campsite. It's called Anchor, because of this anchor. <laughs> Finally, we got to our campsite, with a big, beautiful fire pit and a stunning beach area. I love how empty the park is during the fall, because we had always the pick of campsites. We both smell disgusting after six days that we have a lot of clothes to be washed. All day we were waiting for the moment we could swim. Okay. Okay. But when it finally came to it, Karam was a little bitch about it, as usual. After 10 minutes of much internal turmoil, he finally splashed in and got clean. We've been really needing to wash ourselves and our clothes, so it felt really good. Very little has ever felt so freeing as standing in the sun, naked, wind-dried and goose-pumpy, looking into a horizon of water and trees. Everything in that moment was smiles and gratefulness. After our shower, we made a fire. And by we, I mean Karam. There are very few people I could do this with. Same. We made two meals because we were so hungry and then brownies because it was, well, it was my birthday. Oops, Elena did a boo-boo. <laughs> I made a brownie and it was just for me. Okay. 
You're perfect. <laughs> What a fucking life. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Little did we know, it was all about to get much, much harder. <laughs>